always had it in my mind that, that God was with me, that God would make a way no matter what. And I'm so happy that he's been on my journey with me. I'm so happy that even when I may have had doubts, in the back of my mind, it really wasn't a doubt because I knew God was with me, right? Because God has always been a hiding place for me. It's always been a safe refuge, right? And that's why, matter of fact, let's sing that song. I need your help. <laughs> Thank you. He's my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are. My friend and king, anointed one, most holy. He's my hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and Anointed one, most holy. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will. One more time. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. He's my hiding. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I want to say thank you to Apostle, he's not here right now, presiding elder and all the presbytery for giving me this opportunity and the church as well. Thank you, guys. Um, we are continuing our message on gratitude. This is the month of Thanksgiving, a month where we show God reverence, a month where we give him all the praise. Um, I would like to start by going to Luke. 17, 11 through 19. Can we put up the ESV version if possible? So in Luke, we find the story of Jesus and the 10 lepers. And it reads, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. 
and he fell on his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was the Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. For those who don't know or who are familiar with, lepers had to live outside the streets, outside of the communities. They were considered unclean and contagious. They didn't really have family. They had to stay among themselves, couldn't hug people, couldn't dance with people, couldn't, couldn't receive the same love that others were receiving. Jesus had responded to them by telling them to go to the priest. He didn't heal them and tell them go to the priest. He told them go to the priest. So that's another thing because they went to the priest, which means they had some type of faith, right? So the priests were the ones who could certify that somebody had been cleaned and somebody had been made healed. Um, for them to go to the priest, that was a show that they were already truly healed in God's name, right? Jesus said, go, and it said, as they went, they were cleaned, and they went, and they were healed. And it says that at some point in the story, one of the lepers turned back. They turned back praising God in a very loud voice and fell at his feet. The Bible notes that that one leper was a Samaritan. So he was a foreigner, as it said. He was probably the only one that may have felt that he was undeserving because he wasn't a Jew. This is the Jewish Jesus who was healing them. The rest of them are Jewish and He's a foreigner. Why did he deserve it? And I believe that through that feeling that he was undeserving was one of the main reasons that he went to God to thank him. That, that feeling in his, in his heart of undeservingness made him feel as though he was grateful and he was thankful. When, when we have a heart that says, I don't deserve, that I have no right, it drives our heart to a humble place, a place where we see that this is not because of me. This is not because of anything I've done. It's only because of his mercy. So that's why we give thanks. Amen. The danger is when we feel entitled. We rise up thinking I'm good. I did all this in my life. I deserve this. Do you know what my title is? What I've accomplished, that's when the gratitude may, may disappear because you feel that this is something that's owed to me. But it's when we're in a humble place and realize that we don't deserve anything, then every day we wake up, every gift from God we know is a blessing. Amen. We are grateful in that sense. Which of these lepers can we best relate to? Is it the one that went back or the ones that just went about their day? Like, oh, I knew I'd be healed. It's cool. Um, I feel like in life, we've all had that, that time in our life where we may not have been grateful, where we just get up and go about our day like, like it's regular, like every day is not a miracle, that you were able to get up that you were able to breathe, that you were able to eat, that you were e even able to afford to walk or make it to church. That's a blessing in itself that we should all be grateful for. But to some of us, sometimes that's just a regular day. And I feel that we should have it in our hearts where that shouldn't be a regular day. That's something that we should be happy, glorious, and thankful for. But the lack of gratitude, we have seen it from the beginning of time. <laughs> we can trace it back to Genesis, Adam and Eve. Who's to say they weren't grateful? But even though they may have been grateful, God gave them everything, but they still wanted more. 
they weren't contented. They weren't, they weren't happy with all that God had given them. And that's why they choose to obey and eat the forbidden fruit that caused sin. We, too, are often guilty of the discontentment and, and lack of gratitude, which in turn pushes us to be ungrateful. In today's world, with social media, you seeing everybody living a luxurious life, everybody traveling, everybody doing all these things, and it's like, why can't I do this? So we have that, that feeling of discontentment sometimes where we feel like I deserve that. What makes me not better than this next person? Instead of being grateful in what we already have, what we are already placed in, grateful in what blessings may be coming that we don't even know that God is working on. So the media, it takes the root of sinfulness and selfishness that is found in man, and it seeks to amplify our sense of entitlement. Thinking that we, we are owed these things. It convinces us that we have a right to an easier life, a more comfortable life, a more luxurious life, a more respected position, that we deserve better. Its message embeds in us a heart of complaining and being discontent. It pits us against each other with a sense of competition, comparison, and covetousness. Most of us can even remember recent times, let's say like the pandemic. For many, the pandemic made being thankful even more, more difficult. People were losing jobs, losing income, losing the freedom to go out when they wanted to, losing the freedom to be around family and friends. It made you feel sorry for yourself, made you focus on complaining. But a lot of people may not have been grateful that they were even able to be alive during that time when others weren't able to, that they were not as sick as others may have been. So it's always good to be grateful and remember that even though times are hard, God is still with you, right? In Romans 1, 19 to 21, the apostle Paul talks about the world's lack of thankfulness. What can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown to them for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived. Ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they know God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. And this passage just shows that, that God showed himself to the world through his creation, but the unbeliever does not honor God or give him thanks. He just thinks this is a regular thing. It's just life. And that is not a blessing that it is. A lack of thankfulness is an attribute of those who are without God. And since we are all children of God, thankfulness should be a characteristic of all of us. I have a question. Can a non-believer be thankful? They can be, right? They could be thankful to a degree, right? So now some would argue that unbelievers who are very graceful, thankful people, but what is the truth of their situation? A non-believer could be grateful to an extent. As usually they're focusing on what came to them, what blessing came to them, what they received, and the good things that are happening. But the heart is still dis disconnected from the true gift giver, which is God. James 1, 17, it tells us that Every good and perfect gift comes from above. So for anything good in our lives, we know that it's not from us, it's from God. In the Bible, Thanksgiving is, is likened to a sacrifice, a sacrifice of praise. 
an act of worship. That's what we're doing when we're thanking God. While a non-believer may be thankful for what he or she has received, they miss the purpose of the good gratitude when the thankfulness is misdirected or given to a mere mortal. Let's say, for example, you have to pay rent, you have to pay for school books, you may have to pay for medicine that costs maybe a million dollars, but you don't have it. And then one day, a delivery man shows up at your door, and boom, in the package you have, you have the money for your books, you have the money for your rent, you have the money for the sickness that you have. Right? So in that moment, you begin to thank the delivery man for all that he has done, right? You thank the delivery man for bringing you all these great things that you had, couldn't even have imagined, for everything that he means to you, for the special place that he now holds in your heart for giving you them blessings that you wanted. That doesn't seem right, right? That's kind of weird because the delivery man, he just delivered that blessing, but he didn't, he didn't create that blessing. You will be given the greatest thanks to another instead of the actual gift giver, which is what you're doing when you're thanking other people and not thanking God. It's good to say thank you to the delivery man and maybe give him a tip or something, but but your biggest thanks should go to, to God. We must remember that every good gift and perfect gift is from up above. It is okay to give thanks to another, but we must do well and give thanks to God. The Apostle Paul is often seen in the Bible giving thanks and thanking God for what others may have done for him. In Romans 1.8, Paul says, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. In Philippians 4, Paul thanks God for what the Philippians had done to him. In Colossians 1, Paul says, we always thank God when we pray for you. So he was continually thanking God for the blessings that were surrounding him. And that's something we should all also do. When we get a job, we thank God. When you meet that right person on the street by accident, is it really an accident or is it God? When you meet somebody who can change your life, yes, we want to thank them, but we also have to thank God for placing that blessing in your life. The difference between a thankful heart and an unthankful heart can be traced back to how we view the gospel of Christ. It's merely a matter of the heart. We can see it more clearly in more of the writings of Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians 4.15, Paul wrote, wrote these words. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ was spreading in that verse, right? And the more and more people who came to the gospel meant they were finding salvation. And that salvation caused them to be thankful. That was just a natural result of, of being saved, thankfulness, an outpouring of gratitude. And it gave glory to God for what he had done through them through Christ, which was dying on the cross for us. Um, I believe Thanksgiving is connected to grace. As Apostle said last week, at salvation, we come face to face with the full extent of our sinfulness. That's what salvation is, realizing that we were once sinners, but God has delivered us when we give our all to him. Christ, he took it upon himself to get rid of our sins and the sins of mankind. 
he then paid for our sins by dying on the cross for us, which is the ultimate gift, which is something that we should forever be grateful for. Because we've been saved, and really we can't take any credit for it. We didn't ask for God to do that. He did that. He did it for us, and that's the, the main reason we're here today, the main reason we're breathing, the main reason we're walking. And truly, we didn't deserve it. The only thing we really deserve is death. Um, as children of God, we should, should live in the position of humility and indebtedness for God's grace, for God dying on that cross for us. It should result in a mindset that realizes that we don't deserve anything. We don't deserve the breath we just breathed. We don't deserve the clothes that we're wearing. We don't receive, reserve what we receive in life. Because of this, everything in life is pretty much an added bonus and a blessing. I believe that thinking and that belief, it it births a heart of thanksgiving in all of us when we know that we don't deserve it. As we walk daily with Christ, we will be drawn into the perfection of God and be reminded of our imperfection. You're reminded that we are not a perfect people. And even though we are not a perfect people, God has grace for us. And God will always be with us no matter what we are doing. God is a forgiving God, a God who will carry us through all things. As we walk daily with God, we will be drawn into the perfection of God, as I said. Um, it, it's like in Simon Peter's present reaction when he was in the presence of God, he, he knew that he wasn't worthy. He said, God, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. He knew he wasn't worthy. Or even when Isaiah, in Isaiah 6, 5, he said, woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. That's submitting yourself to knowing that you really aren't what you think you are. <laughs> Without God, you really are nothing. And that's showing you that you should be blessed and you should be thankful and grateful for what God has done for you. As we draw nearer to Christ and realize the truths of the cross, we will be reminded that we are simply empty vessels without him and that his glorious riches are something we should forever be thankful for. If, if one does not know Christ, or if a believer has drawn away from Christ, then the opposite will occur. People won't be grateful. They won't remember God's grace for all our sins. Instead, it will be replaced with a sense of self-righteousness or entitlement. Thinking that you deserve better. The focus goes from what God has done to what man can do. It will go from pleasing God to pleasing oneself, from humility to pride. We will think more about the present than what God has done for us in eternity, for what he has done to save our lives forever, for giving us that chance to breathe. We will be desensitized from our sin and begin to think more highly of ourselves than we than we ought to. In Corinthians 4, 7, we read, what do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if it did not receive it? Like, where did the opportunity come? Where did the, the intelligence that you have come from? Where are the things coming from? That There's nothing that you and I have that we haven't received. All things are from God. The thankfulness of our hearts is directly connected to our intimacy with God, our prayer with him. Our prayer with him. 
our walks with him, our meditations with him, our worship with him is directly connected to what we believe. As we walk near Christ, our sinful past and God's gracious present come together to keep us in a humble and grateful frame of mind. Now, it's one thing to understand the truth when explained. It's another thing to actually be thankful in the midst of everyday life. Life can be hard, but in Ephesians 5, verse 20, it says, Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to do sometimes when you're going through it. It's hard to, to give thanks when you feel you may not have anything to be thankful for because things aren't going the way that, that you wanted. Um, I could go back to Paul. Paul, in his younger, his younger years, he had put his confidence in who he was and what he had accomplished and all that he had done. But after Paul became a follower of Jesus Christ, everything changed. He now, he recognized his sin. He recognized that everything that he had become was because of God. He experienced the endless grace of God. And he found contentment within himself as well. He wrote, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. That was Philippians 3, 7 to 8. Now, knowing that he deserved nothing through Christ, he now found contentment in every circumstance, whether it was good or bad. Paul is not one who lived an easy life. He was familiar with suffering, but yet he still was thankful for God and everything. He had been to prison, exposed to death, had rocks thrown at him, been in dangerous cities, dangerous rivers, but, but God was always with him, and he knew God was always with him, and he was always thankful for that. He still found something to be blessed so that he could still write the gospel, that God could still speak through him. He wrote, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Then you wonder probably, how is that possible to give thanks? I just lost my job. Why I got to give thanks? <laughs> and the real answer is, you don't know what God has planned for you. That loss of a job could mean that another job is coming. It may mean it may give you the strength to start your own your own business. It may lead you to something that you never even imagined. So that's why it's always good to give thanks in all situations. Paul believed that all things work together for our good. Those who love him and are called according to his purpose, they will receive good even in the bad times. That in Christ, Paul had already received more than he could ever ask or imagine. And if God never blessed him again, he was still blessed because God had saved him. That was the key to his gratitude, knowing that, that God had given us salvation and everlasting life. Gratitude focuses on the needs that God has faithfully met in our lives. It pushes back against the forgetness, for forgetfulness of his blessings and fleshly de desires. The gift, the gift of God are an expression of God's love. And our gratitude is a way to receive that, that love and his blessings and respond to God's love. That's why we worship him. The, the overarching blessing of God found in the gospel provides us with an ongoing, ongoing sense of thankfulness that reigns over and outshines even the most difficult of days. So we should always remember that in all times, in the good or bad, that, that God is with us. 
and that God has saved us. And even though today may not be going as we wanted to, or this week may be one of the worst weeks you have, you have to remember that God has given you salvation, God has given you grace, and that God will be with you through it all. Amen. Amen.